really wasn't. Uh, Now, where for internet, 
is uh, you know user generated content, you know flash games and all that sort of thing. So it's like a new exciting territory where folks, you're like you're going, well, I want to be on Gears of War, I want to be on Halo, and that's all recorded in the in the states, right? And you guys are here, but you know it's a global marketplace now. If you get a decent USB microphone that plugs in in a nice quiet part of your house or apartment or flat or whatever to record in then you can be a part of uh, at least an online, and it's great practice. You know, if you're going to be involved in, on the professional level, you can at least get involved on um, some sort of global scale with either voice acting alliance or, you know, form your own group of people and get your own YouTube channel and, and all that sort of thing. But um, the acting experience really, really does help. I don't feel like a hypocrite having not come from acting because since I've gone professional, I have taken acting classes, and I still benefit. So once you go pro, you can't sit there and go, oh, I don't need to know anything. I've gone pro, and like, just rest on the world. You can't stop. That's the interesting thing about this, this world of uh, freelance self-employment as an actor. It's not a nine to five job. You have to hustle. You have to either get an agent to acquire you auditions and, and have no misconceptions about what an agent's job is. An agent's job is not to get you work. An agent's job is to get you opportunities for work. You're going to have to bring your A game. Um, and that's why training and taking classes, whether it's voiceover specific or if it's something on, on camera or on stage, you're going to benefit from learning things like improvisation. Improvisation where you make up things on the fly like that. You've seen the games and all the different things from, from years of going to uh, you know, conventions and, or watching TV and, and, and seeing those things. You know, musical chairs or you know, any, any sort of uh, improv game actually comes into play in what we do in the video game world. Because we're dealing with, nine times out of ten, a Japanese game that has to be localized into the English language. And the audio, we have to match the timing of it. In anime, we're matching a finished product. And you see lip sync. There's very little lip sync when you're recording a video game uh, because the animation's being done concurrently. And sometimes some cutscene stuff is done and it's a very, very raw, very simple, basic animatic sort of version. You know what I mean by animatic? Like basically a comic book panel or some just rudimentary geometric shapes on screen. It's like, this is the character, and he's going from left to right. I mean, it just looks simple and crazy. Like, um, you should have seen how basic the boss that I voice on Devil May Cry 4 looked. You know, he sees the Bale and Dagon are these giant frog demons <laughs> that have naked women dangling off their antenna. I will get mad. Yeah, so I blew my voice out in that session and they ended up just adding a, a, a filter or whatever to make it sound even more demonic. It's like, if I'd known they were going to do that, I wouldn't have done the... <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, gargle with razor blades after. Which is what you sound like. <sighs> so improv comes into play. Sometimes these scripts are overwritten or underwritten. They just are. So that slows down the process in the studio. The time it takes to record a video game could be, depends on the length of your role. I mean, if you're the main guy in a game, it could be, it depends on the size of the game, honestly. Um, if you're on Final Fantasy or something, yeah, you, you might have multiple sessions of three or four hours a piece. Or if you do bit parts on a game, you could be done in an hour. You could be done in 20 minutes. Um, and the way video game scripts are divvied up is these they're, they're giant foam books, really. Uh, when they're not on screen as an Excel spreadsheet, which is usually the way people are going nowadays, is they actually just generate the script on the monitor in front of you. Um, they have uh, three ring binders that are you know, like this thick or whatever, and everything's divided into subsections. As an actor, you're not given this stuff ahead of time. There's no prep, there's no rehearsal. You just know that okay, once you audition and they say, congratulations, you're hired. Can you be here Tuesday from 9 to 11? Yes. Okay. That's all you know. Sometimes they don't even tell you what you're recording until you get there. And even then, the game will have like a, a code name or something. And maybe even your character. And you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement because you're not supposed to tweet about it or Facebook update it or tell your friends or anything. And, you know, because you can get in trouble. 
And it's like, well, what kind of trouble? Well, they could fine you, and worst of all, they could just never hire you again. And that would be bad in the world of freelance voice acting. You want to be um, hireable. You want to make a great first impression, right? So that's why you're taking all these skills that you learn from acting classes, the improv, the cold reading, the ability to absorb material quickly, and be able to kind of showcase your acting. Now, the mindset you need when you're trying to audition for any sort of project, believe it or not, I would say number two is landing the role, because that's actually nothing you are in control of. There's only so much you can do. So the number one thing I think your focus should be when you audition for things, plays, movies, TV, commercials, whatever, voiceover, what you should focus on is doing the best you can and then putting it out of your mind. Because chances are you're not going to land the role. But if you make a great first impression, that casting director, that person, the client, or whoever hears your stuff um, will remember that and they'll call you for future projects. And that's awesome. That's worth its weight in gold right there. Um, so they could hear you and not cast you, but still love you, if that makes any sense. They could be really impressed by your professionalism, your efficiency. It's like, wow, wow OK, great cold reading. They take direction well. They're efficient. They're, they're good. I, they're consistent in their performance. You know, you make an acting choice and you commit to it and then you perform it and then you're in that little window of opportunity. You're about five minutes in the booth and then that's it. That's all the time you have to impress this director with like, here's what it would be like to work with me. Here's my interpretation of the character. Okay, now you redirect me and I tweak that performance. Okay, I've done take two. Maybe take three, you throw a curveball as the director just to see what the actor does. And then, okay, thanks for coming in, great. And then you go on, go back to your life. And then the human part of you goes, oh, I should have done this, could have, would have, should have. But, I mean, don't beat yourself up over it, because what can you do? It's recorded, it's out there in the ether, it's up to fate at that point. But if you make a great first impression, it will say, all right, uh, this, this, this Kyle dude, he came in, and I don't know him from a hole in the wall, but he gave a great performance. It's not what we had in mind, but put a star next to his name. I'll remember, I'll, I'll call him in the on the next project. Again, that's... A fantastic thing. Um, not being hired on a voiceover project does not mean you suck necessarily. <laughs> Just um, you gotta have a thick skin in this business. Super, super thick. Because you're not going to be hired for nine out of ten things. Uh, I've been doing this for 12 years and I've been broke for almost all of it. <laughs> and that's just the truth of it. I mean, um, you uh, just have to accept that, um, you know, and, and of course auditions don't pay. So when you record, when you, when you try out for these projects, just be thankful to the universe that you had a chance to be heard. And then go back to your life and say, all right, what's next? What's the next audition? I audition for things almost daily. Um, except when I go out of the country, then my agent sends fewer things, understandably, because it's like the time difference and all that. But I had some things to record, and I recorded it from the hotel room. I made a little pillow fort. <laughs> <laughs> I took a little USB mic, plugged it directly into my iPhone, recorded it, and then edited it, and then emailed it off. And like, yay. And I booked a lot of games that way from hotel rooms around the world. <laughs> it was fun. So, Never underestimate and how lucky we are in this day and age to have cheap, you know, good, professional sounding, at least for an audition, um, equipment. So, um, yeah, so let's see. Any questions so far? Is this making sense? Yes. I'm um, wondering when, um, sort of, Tony Rapp is coming in the game from the console, how does that affect most Ah, yes, that's a great question. The, the, the way Hollywood is going, they're, you know, gaming is the new Hollywood. You know, you see how many copies of Call of Duty or Halo sells, and it, it, it does better than movies. They have movie-sized budgets. They're in development for as long as movies are, sometimes longer. And um, it's a bit of a sore spot for a lot of us because the celebrities come in, they get paid a lot more, they do their job, and... Um, then the gamers don't really care either way. I mean, people who play Call of Duty don't really
really <laughs> necessarily know that Gary Oldman's in it. He's a great actor, but I mean, they don't even put it on the packaging. They spend all this money and they get celebrities, you know, Christopher Walken and, and whatever, and, and you know, all these people, and the gamers don't care. They just want a good game. Um, so yeah, it kind of rubbed this raw, and then you, you hear nightmare stories from the directors and the studios going, oh my god. Uh, they said Charlize Theron and on Eon Flux, the video game, they hired her for the game as well as the movie. They said she was a nightmare. She was chronically late. She hated, she complained the whole time. When they do those WWE wrestling games and they get the actual wrestlers. <laughs> she, yeah, try to get those guys to settle down. It's like, guys, a microphone is a static object. You can't like, all right, man, I'm going to do that. <laughs> Same thing with the Dragon Quest VIII, it was entirely uh, voice acting yeah, yeah. as well. So. The, uh, the guys at Ardman do run like auditions and things in Bristol as well, if they're making oh, something. All right. So apparently there are, as usual, <laughs> not enough to live on. See, you're an actor, you have to probably have a day job for hours. <coughs> and you know, struggle, 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 struggle. <laughs> Decide that this is either your passion or screw this, I'm going to go get a day job. It's a personal decision. It doesn't make you a better or worse person because you decide to do what you decide to do. But it does take a certain type of mindset to not necessarily be successful in it, but to be open to the possibilities. Um, you can't just say to yourself, I only want to voice video games. I only want to voice anime. Anime pays shit. <laughs> anime pays terrible. Um, games pay much better. Hundreds more US dollars which would probably convert to whatever the conversion rate is for pounds. Um, but games, there's no residuals in games, you know, so you're not going to make money after the fact based on how many units they sell. So you have to be at peace with that. Um, if you record on cartoons, then, or cartoon movies, there are residuals. Well, it depends. I mean, there's union and then there's non-union. Most projects in the world are non-union because clients don't like dealing with paperwork and dealing with unions and having to pay the actors pension health and they don't want to have to, they don't want to split their profits. So they're, 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 we paid you, now go away. Yes? Um, I heard from a friend of mine in Norway who is voice acting, uh, he has voice acting several Ghibli movies in Norway now, and uh, apparently, according to him, the payment was that uh, paying for a minute. So when he did 10 minutes, he got 10,000 and we just made the payment for it. Mm -hmm. uh, is that everywhere? Does the, pay, the pay rate tends to be not per word or per line, but um, in, in games, it, games and anime, it tends to have an hourly rate. A union game will get you about $800. You know, there's SAG and AFTRA, which recently merged. Those are the two unions that govern projects that the O people would do on a union level. So you break that down, non-union games pay $200 an hour, two hour minimum, which means if you record for five minutes, you still get paid for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so 
yeah, I record for X Men Arcade for 20 minutes. I get paid four hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars times two hundred dollars. So I mean, that's where I make most of my money now. Is you know, I may be known for Dragon Ball Z and the anime stuff, but the games are more plentiful and pay more. They have bigger budgets. Some of them have monumental budgets where they hire you know the celebrities of the world to come in. And it's like, wow, you paid how much? I'd like to hear something funny. I guess on Aladdin, originally Robin Williams made about $75,000, which is a lot of money to you and me. But for someone of his caliber, even then, back in the 90s, I mean, he's been a stand up comedian since the 70s, and then a hit TV show, Mork and Mindy, and then he went to and became, and he totally transformed the way. In fact, it's probably his fault that celebrities <laughs> are now called in because he. he Totally just lifted that script off the page and came alive, and, and then he sued the crap out of Disney. And you know, they ended up saying, All right, all right, yes, yes, here's your million. And then since then, you, you have the, the nightmare that, um, you know, sometimes DreamWorks will, will happen with, with Chris Rock saying things at award ceremonies like, I walk into the booth and make a million dollars. <laughs> God, come on, dude, not cool. First of all, you're a name. You go in, and you play yourself. I don't know, is that really acting? Um, so, yeah. Uh, the game thing. Well, back to the games. So, we'll come in completely cold. We know nothing about what we're recording. The director tells us the context, the character we're doing. Uh, so, hey, congratulations, you booked the role of so-and-so. And you're going, what? What was that? I don't remember even auditioning for that. You get to the point where you audition so many things that they're going to have to play a reference for you. So if I go in for X-Men Arcade and they say, congratulations, you're going to be on X-Men Arcade. I go, great, it's who? It's like, let's play your audition, and we'll tell you. And I'm like, OK. So they'll play your audition. It's like, oh, OK. Now voice match it. Here's a line, like, uh, you know, what's the famous line of X-Men? Welcome to die. Right, uh, <laughs> and repeat. Welcome to die. OK, that's great. All right, there he is. Off, we're off and running. Um, if it's a Japanese game, we preview the line in Japanese so we can match the timing of it. So if it takes three seconds to say, oh my god, it's coming this way in Japanese, then I gotta say, oh my god, it's coming this way in the exact same amount of time. Not a second shorter, not a second, definitely not longer. <laughs> um, sometimes the lines are overwritten, underwritten, so we have to just come up with stuff on the fly. Um, <coughs> All the shouty fight reactions, death screams, all that comes in at the end. Why would you do that at the end and not in the beginning? Because you wreck your voice. Uh, I'm going to wreck it! Yes, because we're going to wreck your voice, and you're going to sit there and try and um, you know, have some hot tea and not sound like you are going to go in after five minutes of doing that. So yes, the screamy stuff, the shouty stuff, all the power of yells and everything, that's all saved to the end. You have no idea what the context of your character is saying because, again, these three ring binders of huge amounts of paper, if they choose to print it out, are divvied up by character. So it's not like you're reading a book or a screenplay where there, there's, you know, yeah, your lines are in order, but they're grouped together. So all of my Ryu lines for Street Fighter are all in one little section of the binder. So I'm saying things to other characters, I'm replying to other characters, I have no idea who I'm talking to in the scene. But luckily the director knows, and people from Capcom know, because it's their game, they better know what they're doing. <laughs> so we'll break it down. So if I see my line is, doing fine. Okay, I'm assuming someone asked how I'm doing, right? So it's like, well, let's look it up. Well, um, <coughs> in the world of video game recording, uh, we'll do like typically three takes in a row of each line. We'll hear it in Japanese, and then we'll follow it up with three in a row of the English version. So that's take A, B, C. The client will sit there and decide, okay, B was best, that's great. Or if they don't like any of them, then you just do another set of three. Once they like that, they check mark it or whatever, highlight it on their little Excel sp spreadsheet, like, okay, done, next. Kind of like an assembly line. All right, next line. Preview. One, two, three. Okay, uh, one was great. Okay, moving on. One, two, three. Okay, those suck. Let's do it like this. 
Okay, one, two, three. Now a little more like this. And then you get, okay, now the fight stuff, and now the, the, the death shouting stuff. And there's like different fight reaction sounds. There's, a, you know, there's closed mouth, there's open mouth, there's clenched teeth, there's small, medium, and large. Um, and sometimes it's very, very specific. You know, how do you die? And well, maybe you'll burn to death, or be electrocuted, or be decapitated. Or it's like, let's give some more blood gurgle to that. <laughs> So you just like, you know, take a swig of water or something. I don't know. <laughs> and sometimes it does sound pretty nasty. <laughs> and Speaking of things you probably don't want to do before a session, um, the mic can hear everything. Everything. Like your heart beating, your food digesting. <laughs> so it'll hear like, oh, that. oh, sorry. So if you eat right beforehand or you don't eat right beforehand, it doesn't really matter. If your stomach makes any noise, the mic's going to pick it up. Um, you want to avoid milk or milk products. Milk shake. Milk causes phlegm. Don't have a big old thing in yogurt before a session. It's probably not wise. Uh, things that create mouth noise. You know, soda. This is probably a bad thing to have during or before a session. I break the rules all the time. But it affects me, though. They'll say, Kyle, I can hear the... The mouth noise that we're, you're not hearing right now, but if I were on mic, you could hear it every <laughs> day. Um, now they could go into the digital file and highlight all those pops and clicks and remove it, but perfect world, you're going to lay down a nice clean take without mouth noise. Uh, stuff that helps remove mouth noise is room water, uh, room temperature water. It's somehow better than cold water. I prefer cold water. It tastes better. Uh, there's different, uh, you know, throat remedies. There's, you know, Chinese throat drops. There's cough syrup. Uh, uh, Fred Tattashore who voices the heart <coughs> on the animated uh, Marvel stuff. Uh, he went into Chinatown in Los Angeles and found this thing with a name as long as the alphabet. And it tastes pretty good. It looks nasty. But, you know, you take two teaspoons of it's, it's cough syrup. And it actually helps you get through all that. <laughs> Okay, that's great. I'll do ten more. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Larger, larger, longer. <laughs> okay, now do it. Um, close mouth. Which <laughs> 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 teeth? Okay, that's great. Now, uh, <laughs> now backwards in Swahili. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I just sit there and watch this. <laughs> now do it like this. Then they'll roll and they'll have outtake footage. And, you know, use it against you. <laughs> All the fight sounds, especially from the female actors, uh, tend to sound like porn. <laughs> if you them together, it sounds very bad. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, I, I noticed that when recording on Dragon Ball Z, they have these um, different sound booths where the guys would take all the audio files from all the actors, which would take like maybe two weeks to record a DVD's worth of episodes. It takes about two weeks to schedule everybody to come in and record. And then they clean up the files, take all the pops and clicks that perhaps <coughs> didn't be done away with during the actual session, and they sit there and, and, and click all the files and edit everything. And I would go like, ah, ah, ah. And I was like, what's going on in there? Like, <laughs> scene. <laughs> okay. Of course. Um, all right. So um, when you when you try out for video game characters, you um, you might see. I know I sh probably should have had this on a computer file so you guys could see. But you can see that I have a picture of a character. You usually see a picture of the character, a description of the character, and then some lines that show a range of emotion. You know, it could be happy, sad, anger. You know, calm. Things that are completely out of different contexts from different scenes in the game or whatnot, and they may call for fight sounds, they may not, but today for our intensive purposes, we're going to have everyone do some fight sounds <laughs> and things like that. So I brought up a, <coughs> I brought up from League of Legends, which is not a Japanese game, and I don't have the Japanese, I don't have the audio or video anyway, um, but I do have some, some line samples here. As you can see, an Excel spreadsheet, column after column after column with words and, and notes from the producer and it describes like moves, attacks, 
character select, and then at the bottom, highlighted very darkly, is like, oh, death screen, pain, effort, laugh, spell cast, ultimate effort. <laughs> sounding constipated, okay. <laughs> Fun time. <clears throat> All right, so, um, so I got this character, Ezreal, and uh, the description is he's a teenage prodigy whose intelligence is unmatched. He's incredibly confident, and this confident mixed with his age can make him sound slightly condescending at times. Despite this, at his core, he is very well intentioned. That's all I know about him, and then the picture of him, with, you know, a young guy who like, kind of looks like Harry Potter in, in this version of the character. It's like, okay, so he's young, he's, he's not a bad guy, he's just kind of cocky, he's kind of arrogant, and he's young, so he's not going to sound like Darth Vader or a or anything like that. He's going to have a higher pitch voice. So, do we have a volunteer who would like to attempt? And I saw your hand up first, so come on down. Come on down, the price is ready. Right. of Ezreal, as you can see, young guy, hang up blonde hair, glasses, uh, he's got his little weapons there and everything. So we're, we're going to pick some of these lines here. As your director, I'm just going to move you through a kind of a quick okay. session, as it were. Not really an audition, we're going to have you do things three in a row. We're going to record lines in sets of threes. So the first thing is move number one. The tone is confident, so he's going to sound like he knows what he's talking about, he believes in what he's saying. The line is from imagination to creation, so give me three takes in a row from imagination to creation. From imagination to creation. From imagination to creation. From imagination to creation. Okay, lovely, nice, it sounded confident. Now I want to amp up the energy a little bit more and make it a little more showy, like you're you're introducing something like it comes from my brain and then it's reality. Like, look at this awesome invention I created, like from imagination to creation. Now then make something big and over the top. <laughs> from imagination to creation. <laughs> from imagination to creation. <laughs> ah, from imagination to creation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Take two sounded like he wasn't quite sure. <laughs> but take three more than made up for it. He sounded very confident and like, hey. And it helped to physicalize that too. That I just put in the top of my head. I said, like, okay, from imagination, I just did this and then signal over here. That helped actually give your performance some dynamics. So when in, in the VO world, even though it doesn't matter what we do physically, it can affect you physically. Notice that we are standing. We do that in the booth too. The only time you'd be sitting when you record is maybe for an audiobook. Things that require long about bouts of time with lots of, you know, no breaks and, and whatnot. Um, but generally, you know, you have more energy, you have a, an open up diaphragm. If, if you even record yourself at home, <coughs> just to notice the subtle difference, record yourself reading anything aloud, back of a magazine, a comic book panel, or a blog. Record yourself sitting down. And then record it standing up, and you're going to see, wow, that kind of sounds a little bit better. There's better energy and all that. Um, let's move to <coughs> number 10. Now, in this one, Ezreal is supposed to be unintentionally condescending while attempting to be cordial. <laughs> <laughs> and his line is, it might be better if you wait in the base. So, you know, your context is that uh, you've got this idiot here who's trying to... Uh, he was like, I know what to do. It's like, no, 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 shut up. Let the big people handle this. <laughs> but, you know, you're not totally douchey. Yeah, it's like, so, all right, let's hear you do three takes of that. It might be better if you wait in the base. And it might be better if you wait in the base. It might be better if you wait in the base. Yeah, Woo! beautiful. <laughs> you're kind of talking with your arms and everything, that's great because if you've ever watched any behind the scenes stuff of actors or video sessions, celebrity or not, doesn't matter. They talk with their arms all the time. They're very animated and their eyebrows are going up and down and sometimes the animators, like at Pixar for example, will videotape 
the celebrities record their sounds and they actually in, you know, include that into the animation. That's why nine times out of ten, a Pixar cartoon, it, and the characters look like the celebrities that voice them. And that's why, because the mannerisms that they have while they're recording and all that. So as long as your arm's not slapping around, hitting the mic, and you know, you're, not, you're not pitting your head too much and all that, then you can have that sense of uh, dynamics. Um, so that's a great set of three. Let's move to attack number seven. In this scene, he's confident and bold, then disappointed and slightly disgruntled. And uh, his line is unparalleled psionic abilities. And this is the best haircut I can get. Okay. Unparalleled psionic abilities. And this is the only, only haircut I can get. <laughs> Unparalleled sonic abilities, and this is the only heck that I could get. <laughs> Unparalleled sonic abilities, uh, and this is the only heck that I could get. <laughs> <laughs> Changed the line slightly, but I mean the performance was brilliant. So we had you saying sonic abilities. The word is like psionic. Oh, psionic. P S I O N. I see. Unparalleled sonic abilities, and this is the best haircut I could get. So you had this this cool idea, and, and really realized I haven't had anyone perform the line like that. Like, this is the best haircut I could get. Well, I like it. Um, and it brought something unique to it, and that's something you want to do as an actor. You don't want to just do <coughs> what I think everyone else is doing, because then you just blend in. You want to bring a piece of yourself so that you stand out, come up with some sort of idea, and commit to it, because they hear. Dozens of these auditions, maybe even more, and uh, you've got to do something. That, this is why we always stress in these voiceover panels how it's like, oh, I can do a Vegeta one. That's nice. That's wonderful. But you know, what can you do? What would you bring to the role? You can't just sit there. It's like I'm going to imitate Johnny Young Bosch. It's like, don't do that. Johnny Young Bosch is Johnny Young Bosch. What are you going to do in this role that you have? It? And that's why it's so important you demonstrate that in that little window of time. Um, okay, uh, now we're going to get to the fun stuff, the, uh, the fight sound. You're not going to need a, a script really for this, but uh, I'll direct you. Um, so, uh, efforts. The efforts will be, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to say these are going to be, let's start with something simple, like lifting a rock, lifting a, a small object, like a box. So give me uh, three lifting sounds of lifting up a box. Okay. It's small. Yep. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he's not abilities. He's going to lift a boulder. So let's just let's just make it like it, it, it takes some effort because this is huge and he's all by himself. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Background. <laughs> <laughs> um, I seem to have to do a little small play thing in a town hall called uh, Facebook. Great. Okay. Because I, I love that he's giving very different, you know, uh, on every take. You know, they're not three takes of like. <laughs> You know, it's all the same. You want to differ them up, whether in pitch or length, or add some gravel to it, or you know, a pause like you did the pause in the last take. It was uh, really, really nicely done. Okay, so Thank you. let's move to an attack sound. Yes, water is important. <laughs> <laughs> Staccato things like huh, and then 
a, a larger one will be like, ha! And then the largest will be a little bit longer, like, ya! You know, some things like that. And play with consonants. They don't have to be all ya or ha ya. They could be a T or a K or a <laughs> car. Like, like Link from Legend of Zelda actually does that quite Does he? Okay, then. Yeah. 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 All right, then. So, yeah, three variants there. Small, medium, large. Ya! Yeah. Okay, so those actually are three large. <laughs> three wonderful large, and they're all different, and they're all usable, and they all sound like good attack sounds. But I just want to direct you through small, medium, large. So start smaller, and then bigger, longer one. Yeah, and then the biggest one. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it better than the 
I was just stuck. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. Now, um, now let's kill Goku. <laughs> kill Masako! <laughs> Not enough.
quick death, and then we're done. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's uh, a a um, a laser blast to the head. So this is painful. Let's do a two part. So the impact, the damage, like ah! and then your body crumbles to the ground. And 